Okay, 35. Uh, nothing really new on the 35 uh, as of right now since you put it before. We do have a change in the mill. We just have, uh, as of this week, we have no data on it. Um, the flat camera looks identical. Before, the change that's coming down the pike is to have a light foot right here. Well, I don't think we'll have it for 20 years. You think, Bill, you think it's going to be built in right at the same I know it will. It's going to be identical. Identical to commercial. And, uh, and then we're also flying, as, as usual, two rolls of the 800-1600 ectochrome. That's, uh, that's a slide film. Its uh, normal rating is 400, and that's what we will call it. We normally call it out in our checklist, but it's more appropriately shot at 800 and, if necessary, 1600. It can, in a pinch, be shot at 3200. Is this for low light level right. conditions? And what's the right. trend for? That's just, we've decided to put some negative, uh, good skin, as real good skin rendition. That's what most professional photographers use, weddings and mm. one thing or another. And we threw that in uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, just to have some nice uh, print. We wanted to try to fly some negative film. We wanted some that had some real good skin tones, and uh, that's that's the one we chose. We just throw two rolls of it in. Two rolls for, for people. You use it for whatever you want to use it for. Mechanical shutter. When you use that, you know, fly it manually. Okay. Uh, you don't ever want to use this thing. If uh, I push this button down and get it metering, the meter goes for the next 17 seconds. Uh, if I activate this thing with the motor drive engaged, It goes crazy. <laughs> so the only time you want to use that mechanical is if you really don't have any battery power uh, or your meter is not working because it'll just go bonkers. And um, the exposures that you get are not valid. The first one is pretty good and they get progressively worse. So it'd be unusable, uh, generally unusable film. And uh, uh, just a clue, when that red light does come on at the end of film and you take the film out, you'll have to clear it. It light will stay on until you either manually advance it to clear it or another little trick is to turn the motor drive off and turn it back on and the red light uh, will extinguish. Uh, but uh, the easiest way is download the film in advance. When you load it again, you obviously have to advance it. That'll turn the red light off. Uh, also, if you have this thing set for 400, over 400 ISO, it will flash at you because the logic in the thing is only set for uh, ISO 25 to 400. Now, if you have the exposure comp set, remember the exposure compensation actually internally just G-Wizzes your ISO. It's not a separate computation. Uh, it uh, will sense if you've got the ISO, uh, the exposure comp set to, uh, you know, say, let's say minus even one-third or two-thirds, and you put it on 400, it'll probably flash at you because it's sensing another, another ISO. Unfortunately, this is the normal way we shoot with this flash. Uh, it gets rid of the red eye. You know, the orbiter is not exactly the brightest place in the world, and your pupils are open a little bit. And if you shoot it right here, the direct somebody, there's a good chance of, unless you're, you're getting red eye, and those are really, uh, really ugly. Uh, this, unfortunately, also throws a shadow off to the side. So you just, you know, I guess we'd, we'd rather deal with the shadow than the red eye. So that's, uh, uh, that's what you have to live with. If you want to bounce, uh, if you want to do any real close-up work, you can do this. And if you're going to bounce, it has to be out here. And remember that when you're, when you're bounce flashing, you're going to lose quite a bit off your, off your, uh, overhead there. So you're probably going to have to open up. Uh, if you're shooting close, you'll need 5.6 to f8. Uh, if you're shooting very far away, you may have to be working at f2, you know, pretty wide open. So. Okay. All right. 70. Right now, you will find there's no filters on there. All the cameras you check out, there should be filters on there. We're trying. We brought it up with the photo worker group this week. We want to get filters on all First, my memory bill. When I put okay. the power on, I'm getting a red light. Yes, that's because that one is so. that one is uh, dead. This is what you should get. Where did you see the red light? On? You turn it on. You should get uh, after a couple of seconds. You'll get a green light for about two and a half to three seconds. And it goes out. And then it goes out. And that tells you your batteries are good. Your logic is good. It'll flicker each time you take a shot. And it'll for about two seconds. It'll come on for about two seconds after you shoot a picture, which low battery power, no logic, or after you shoot. If you get a red light, it's not printing because it's probably dumb with logic. And there's no way to load the logic? No. If you take the batteries out uh, while the memory is still good, you have exactly six seconds to get the batteries changed before it does dump. Okay, mount it on the camera. Uh, just set it up on the little hinges. Just, uh, you can find them there. Push the lever over, please. Push it up against the camera and let go of the lever. You may need to do that. And obviously, you have to do that to take it off. Yeah. Uh, if the dark slide is removed, which it should be for shooting pictures, it shouldn't come off. It shouldn't. 
he does, so we need to know back. Just shut the mouth. He has 26 proof. scheduler received a request for a galley refresher or a galley briefing uh, for the crew and so that's what we're going to do today we're just going to spend an hour or so um, looking at the galley and how it works and I'll uh, explain the components of it and some corrective action in case you have a malfunction and we'll talk about the food and the meal tray and how it's packed and we'll prepare a meal but because because we do need to heat the frankfurters up why don't I start with the food and we can put those in the oven and do the galley briefing while they're heating up. The, uh, of course, the, the locker stowage is the same as it's always been for the meals. And by the way, those are the new locker latches that are going to fly for evaluation. And uh, everybody that's tried them likes them a lot better. Here's a, here's a standard meal tray. And this contains the fresh food items in the back, as well as the accessories in the front, the utensils and condiments, and, uh, wash and dries, and of course each crew member's selection for the menu is marked with his color code. And when you go to prepare the meal, uh, there's an order that you need to follow so that it works out the most efficiently. And of the different, there's several different kinds of food packages, and one of them is these foil pouches that normally have the meat in them. In this case, it's frankfurters. You can also get um, uh, barbecue beef and steak and, and so several kinds of meat. We don't get steak. Okay. We get frankfurters. <laughs> these need to be heated up in the oven up against the hot plate. And so they need to go into the oven first so that they heat up while everything else is going on. And the way this works, in there and remove the, the clip, and the spring will hold it up against the hot plate. And you can you can put you can put up to two against each. He didn't need his heat, but that's okay. You can put up to two against each uh, each segment, and then they'll. Those will get hot just by conduction with the hot plate. Uh, the next step, is, and we don't have any of these today, but if you had some rehydratable plastic packages that need hot water to rehydrate, such as the vegetables or rice, those would be done next. And you rehydrate those with the amount of hot water that's indicated on here using the, the rehydration station, and we'll do this in a minute for the drinks. And then those go into the oven also. They need a little bit less time to heat up than the foil meat that, pouches. That and these slide into this lower compartment on these plastic runners. And you can put up to 14 of them in here. And this is what really needs, needs the use of the fan to circulate the hot air down to those. As I recall, they, just, you know, they had the magnets on the bottom before where those little holes are now. They had those little magnets in it made it hard to stick to anything else, even even to the lockers, because of the magnets mm -hmm. being in the way. I think the only remaining magnets are for the utensils yeah. right here on the meal yeah. tray. And of course, the plastic, you, you've all used meal trays before, the plastic food packages fit in there. The, uh, the odd-shaped ones fit in these rubber places. The clips are for condiments and wet wipes, and the utensils are magnetic. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the, these, are, these are test ports for testing on the ground. You won't have occasion to use those. Okay. <laughs> we can uh, we can go ahead and start preparing the meal itself. We'll get out the meal trays. Now there's there's a little trick to doing this. It says eight ounces of cold water, but if you put eight ounces in there all at once, 
you're not going to be able to shake this up to get the powder. So you can do it in two hits of four and, uh, and mix it up a little better. I want to illustrate. Okay, now it's, it's there's a slight delay as it starts to dispense. All right, all right. Okay. Now you don't have to worry about overfilling these packages because the maximum you can put in here is about 12 ounces. Some stiff in there. Anybody have? Huh. Did you say there are no packages in here? Um. No, but I think we've hmm. got some. Here, I'll use these. Okay. Don't don't step in that. We got the we got the cover for the front of this. <laughs> Yo. there's, there's, there's probably a towel in the, in the WCS compartment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> these uh, these should be hot by now. So, uh, who wants to get them out? Get, yeah. It's, it, you have to hold on to it for a few seconds for it, for it. And it burns you. you you've got a, a couple seconds of grace there since it's not too hot. Okay, uh, dinner is served. Let's go. If you guys would like to sit down out on the landing to eat, that's what we normally do in these classes. It's more comfortable. I'm going to eat all the rest of you. Mustard, mustard. Yeah, one of the curds are. Give me a lettuce, honey. Hot dogs and no mustard. Hot dogs and no mustard. That's on American. Oops. That's taco sauce. Tabasco. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. No mustard. No mustard. See, they got all this yellow taco sauce, so they thought there was mustard. <laughs> mayonnaise. Hot dogs and mayonnaise. Mayonnaise from. Uh, and uh, the only other thing I need to say in here is that there's supposed to be several of these long food. Uh, trash bags that are long skinny trash bags that are packed in each of these meal trays and a convenient place to put those is they've got tape on them you just put them right here and uh, stack you have to to stack these food packages back in there the way they were designed to go to get them all back in that bag and uh, and then if, if all the food's completely eaten when it goes in there then that goes into the dry trash <laughs> There's a CR in work to upgrade the galley in the SMS to flight line status so that that, that won't be negative training anymore. It is right now. Mm -hmm. um, Anybody want to carry or jump to the floor about five times? We're all through. We're all through. Okay. If, if you have any more questions about the galley, um, don't hesitate. To uh, the IFM, I want to know how to make sure we bypass all of that stuff. I'm yeah, we'll get that. I'm sure you'll get that in the IFM class. Let's see, IFM, this guy, and Chef. Chef. Do you remember all that? Did you work?